All right. Well, uh, today I'm, I'm privileged uh, and honored to be joined by Jared Shaffit. He is the host of the Boneyard podcast that covers East Carolina athletics. Uh, we had a big, big week, big game for uh, both schools. UCF is uh, on the road going to Greenville, North Carolina to take on the East Carolina Pirates this Saturday night at 730 on ESPNU. Jared, uh, thank you very much for joining me. Pleasure is all mine. Thank, thanks for having me, Brandon. Yeah, yeah. So for UCF, it's it's kind of good to be back on a regular schedule. They've been playing a lot of these uh, midweek games. You know, a couple weeks ago had a Wednesday game against SMU that was delayed a few days because of the hurricane that came through last week. Played Temple on a Thursday night, so we're kind of back to a regular schedule. I know it's a short week or a shorter week, I guess, for ECU. Uh, they played late Saturday night, had that thrilling four overtime win against the Memphis Tigers. I saw most of that game. Definitely uh, saw all the second half, all the overtimes. What was kind of? Let's. I guess we'll start off with that. Uh, what was your takeaway from that game? I mean, it, I, you know, watching those overtimes, you know, it could have got either way a couple times. But I mean, they got to be feeling good to to come away with that one because there's been some games earlier this season that I know that just got away. Yeah, I mean that was. I mean, honestly, after being down seventeen nothing in the first quarter, I mean, let's talk about that first. <laughs> yeah, I mean, ECU's down seventeen nothing in the first quarter, and I'm like, okay, well, we're packing it in. This season's over. I mean, you, you're about to go through a gauntlet of a of a schedule when you have uh, UCF, Cincinnati, BYU, and Houston as your next four games, and you've got to win at least two more games before the end of the season. I mean, we played Temple to finish it off, so counting that one. Yeah. But then, but then looking at these other four games that we have to have at least one win, it's like okay, we're uh, our, our season's probably uh, not looking too good at, after after the hot start. Um, but in overtime, it was this weird sense. Uh, I mean, there there's been some changes made. I mean, place kicker has been replaced. Uh, Owen yeah, Daffer. I remember that game against uh, North Carolina State. <laughs> yeah, Owen, <laughs> with, I mean, with the Owen, kicker, he he missed a he missed a game winning field goal against NC State. Look, that happens. It's college football. He also hit a fifty four yarder last year against Navy to win the game. So, I mean, yeah, y- y- you have the good and the bad in college right. football. But um, it, it just kept piling up. He he's missed. I think he's like three for six, three for. Like he he's he's like eighty percent for extra points uh, on on the season. So he was benched this week, and and EC went to true freshman Andrew Conrad, and um, it, it was like okay, well maybe we don't have to worry about that, but you still have a true freshman kicking in his first ever like start. So you're you're kind of still worried about it, and then um, you're like, well, what what do how do we win this game like? We haven't been able to win the close game. And uh, you, you look back to last year and ECU beat Memphis in overtime last year um, at Memphis. So it was like, okay, the guys kind of settled in and it felt like, all right, we've been here before. Last time we were in Dowdy Ficklin, we were in overtime. It didn't go our way. This week, we got everything clicking. Not We haven't turned the ball over. We, we've played solid defense outside of the first quarter. And our offense has been solid ever since the, the end of the second half or end of the first half. So, that, that's kind of what it felt like. It was like, okay, we're cautiously optimistic, right? Um, and then on the second drive in overtime, it was like, you get the, you score the touchdown, but you have to go for the two, and you don't get it. And it's like, damn, yeah, that's the game. But then your defense, who, I mean, one of the best red zone defenses in the country, uh, last time I checked last week, I think they were number six red zone defense in the country. They've had five goal line stops in in the first six weeks of the season. And you're you're looking at them, and you just need them to hold off Memphis from scoring on the two point conversion. They do. Chance Stevens, or Chase Stevens, phenomenal. That that play. I mean, not enough people. Stephen Igo even wrote an art, whole article about how not enough people are talking about that play. Um, to be able to trip up the guy and and make the tackle. Um, that that was big on that two point conversion play. That that ended up helping us win the game. Um, but yeah, it was, it was kind of like you do your job, offense does their job, defense does their job and you just exhale. Um, yeah. I mean, that was a game that in the past ECU would not have won and, uh, somehow they found a way to do it this week. 
so how how badly I guess could you say ECU needed that win? Because right now they're four and three. Obviously, the alternative if you drop that, you're three and four. You know, you look at the schedule; just a few plays away could easily be six and one. I uh, talked about the missed kick uh, in the opening game against NC State. You know, that could have been a win. You lost a two overtime game to Navy. Uh, yeah, you get beat by, I mean, by by Tulane. Tulane's having a great year, but it was just a few plays away from being six and one right now. Yeah, I mean, really, when we reviewed the or recapped the Tulane game last week on our on our podcast, that game was a lot closer than the score showed. I mean, the score was twenty four to nine. Look, ECU scored a touchdown on the opening drive, ended up being called back for for a illegal man downfield. Then you had a, another goal. You had a goal line stop, and then an unsportsmanlike penalty. After the play, I mean, you brought up fourth down and goal from like the five yard line. Unsportsmanlike gives a free first down, and it's first and goal from the one. They score. There was like a thirteen point swing over over penalties in the first quarter, and then you also have another missed field goal. So it's it's one of those things where that game was a lot closer. ECU is, I mean, really four penalties and. And two missed kicks away from being six and one, seven and zero oh, um, on the season, and so that that's it's tough from an ECU perspective. Eventually, you've got to win these close games, and and that's kind of what Coach Houston's mantra has been the whole time: is first you're going to lose, you're going to lose big, then you're going to lose small, then you're going to win small, and then eventually you'll win big. And I mean that's kind of been the the mo. And we're playing in a lot of one possession games. We did last year too. It's just being able to overcome that. When we're winning, we're winning big. Outside of this past week against Memphis, I mean, we're we're winning big. When we're losing, we're losing close games. Um, so it, it's one of those things where they're on the precipice of, of really turning the page and becoming what EC football has been known to be over the past decade and a half. Yeah, and this is this is kind of a it's kind of a sad game for me because uh, when you look at, at this series between the two schools, uh, they play twenty times. You know, pr- played almost every year since '05. I think there was one year they didn't play because I think UCF got in the American maybe one year before ECU did. So there was one season there. Even uh, two schools even played a few times in the 1990s, early 90s. Um, I think before UCF was even a one A program. I'm curious if you've heard this because. I all this was before my time, but I always would hear this, you know, when I'd go up to Greenville for the games, turn on pirate radio or whatever the radio station is. And they'll always talk about 1993 uh, East Carolina quarterback was Marcus Crandall and uh, they were playing U- UCF. And uh, I guess there was a sack and they broke his leg. And I always do. You, have you ever heard that story before? I hear that all the time. Yeah, it's before I, my time. Vaguely, but that's yeah. the thing about East Carolina fans never forget about that play. There, There's certain plays that ECU fans hold on to. I mean, that that's one play. Uh, the play from my generation, of course, is yeah, yeah. the, the hell man. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I, before we hopped on, I, I told you I was a sophomore. I uh, I, w- I was one of the few fans that stayed like through that game because it it was such a cold night in in Greenville. It was, if I remember correctly, it was end of November, early December. Yeah, it was. And- it was that. It was there was no conference championship games. It was uh, so they played that conference championship game weekend, and it was on the third. I think it was on a Thursday night before that championship yeah. weekend. So there wasn't any other games going on, and it was ESPN, I think. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, and I think it had the top crew, and yeah. Yeah, it was It was like the premier game of the week, and it was cold. It was rainy. ECU goes down by like 20 points in the first half. Everybody's like, all right, we're done. Like, we've had a decent season. Let, let's just go home. Well, I've never left an ECU sporting event early. In my time being a fan, I've never left a sporting event early. And I said, I'm going to see see it through. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stick through it. I still believe. And ECU comes storming back in, in the second half. And it's like, okay, like, we got something going here. And the, there was some questionable play calling, questionable clock management. Yeah, and, by, uh, at the end, because UCF, frankly, should not have had an opportunity no, to no, execute I mean, those, those plays. 
I mean, Lincoln Riley runs the ball with, with Shane Carden or, or um, I'm trying to remember who, Breon Allen, I think, was the running back for ECU at that time. Uh, I mean, you run the ball a couple of plays, get a first down, you salt the game away, you win. I mean, <laughs> you salt the game away, you win, and I mean, you're looking at a, a another ten and three season, right? Um, and and that unfortunately didn't happen. It was it we we turned the ball over, and then the I can't remember the guy's name for UCF who got behind our our defense, Brashad Perry. Man, he's still yeah. playing in the NFL. Yeah, uh, and I was just like. Hit him like in college football. The the pass interference rule is fifteen yards. Hit him. Yeah, I don't care. <laughs> like take the penalty. Try again. Make them make them play with shorter field. That's fine because it's it's going to be an untimed down for all the marbles. Do it. That that's all we need. And um, so yeah, I, I was really hoping that that would happen. But um, yeah. yeah, that that's the that's the play I think about about UCF. Um, but yeah, that that play I've heard I've heard some of the older heads talk about it um, in the past. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm just I was finding the the pictures to put on screen from that play. Uh, mm. It was just amazing because you can see number 39, one of the DBs. I don't know his name, but he's he's already getting ready to take off his chin strap because he's thinking now oh, this is this plays over, this game's over. You know, they're not going to execute this. You know, he's. He's not even doing anything. He's just standing there, and uh, no one in a million years thought that play would be would be executed the way it was. But it was just, I mean, that was just absolutely insane of a finish. Um, if, if you know, you, if you look at that picture, like if you're looking head on into uh, the UCF receiver, I am standing directly behind him in the boneyard, and I'm like one of like 15 people still in the boneyard. Um, I went from hugging a security guard. <laughs> one minute to like crying the next minute. Um, it, it really was unfortunate. Um, but yeah, that, that, that's the play I think about. Yeah. Yeah. That was, that was just one of those plays. Let me see if I can find another angle here of that one, the photo that I took, but yeah. I, I, and a lot of UCF fans joke about it, but in a way, I think it's it's kind of true. Did that, I, you know, that almost, you know, that put a, almost put a dagger in the program, at least for a number of years. It seemed like if you talk about where ECU was and, and you know, a contender at the top of the league, whether it was CUSA or the early years of the American, and ever since that game, it, it, it kind of set forth, set, you know, kind of a downward spiral that you guys are just now finally starting to get out of. Yeah, I mean, that you think about it, that was Lincoln Riley's last regular season game um, with the Pirates. And he was kind of the mastermind, always has been a mastermind on offense. And, I mean, EC used to put up gaudy numbers, much like UCF did last week against Temple. I mean, when we put up 70, we did it against Carolina, right? Um, and, and Lincoln Riley was leading that. And that was... We we didn't we bring you then bring in I believe they brought in Donnie Kirkpatrick who's now on his like third stint with East Carolina and ECU fans are like tired of it, um, but you you lose him and it's like the offense you then you lose Shane Carden Shane Carden graduates Justin Hardy graduates now it's like okay there's so much turnover going into 2015 it's like how how are we going to continue on and. They did a. They had a pretty good year. I mean, yeah, you don't go to a bowl. You're five and seven, and then they fire Ruffin McNeil, and ECU. Everybody at ECU is like, "What? Why, why are you firing Ruffin McNeil? What? What is this?" The only thing I can say, and look, I've talked to Ruffin several times. We had him on the podcast uh, about a year ago. Um, the only thing I can say about Ruffin McNeil as a head coach, he wasn't a great recruiter, and they ECU knew at the time to compete in the American. You had to be getting these high end three stars, low end four star guys into the program, and he wasn't going to do that. His two best recruits were Justin Hardy and Shane Carden. Between them, they had two offers, and I mean Justin Hardy was a preferred walk on at ECU. And then no, I didn't uh, even realize. I mean, what is he? Yeah, best wide receiver in school history. You know, one I of mean, the best best wins in the nation. I didn't know he was a walk on. I forgot yeah, about that. I mean, EC, ECU has the top two reception leaders all time in college football and Zay Jones and, and Justin Hardy, Justin Hardy didn't have any offers. 
Zay Jones, I think he had a couple offers from some smaller schools. But then Shane Carden, his only other offer, this is a Houston guy, his only other offer was Eastern Michigan. And okay. so he was like, well, I'm a Houston guy. I'm not going to go play in the Mac at Eastern Michigan and suffer through that. I'm going to go I'm going to go somewhere that has decent football history and he came to he came to East Carolina. And so he wasn't a great recruiter, right? Um that that's the thing that you look at and you're like, okay, Scotty they bring in Scotty Montgomery. He was supposed to be like a a great recruiter. He he was younger. He was he could uh, relate more to to the athlete yeah, he but was the he, offensive coordinator at Duke, right? That's, yeah, that but he, he was? wasn't he wasn't calling plays at Duke. He was with he was with Cutcliffe, and Cut, yeah, Cutcliffe, Cutcliffe was Cl- the offensive coordinator. Yeah, yeah, and he was just he had the title of offensive coordinator, right, for a, a Duke football. Now, when they fired Ruff and McNeil, there was times where they were like, I rem- I'll never forget see- reading an article about like who were like some of the insiders saying that like who we were gonna have, and it was like the biggest name was like Brady Hoke. Like everybody was talking about how Brady Hoke was gonna be our next head coach and I was like all for it um, but yeah it that kind of broke the program and you look back as an ECU fan ECU alum you look back and you're like all right Jeff Comfer the former athletic director so he, he did some shady dealings Cecil Staten same thing um, he, he was the chancellor at ECU he was kind of shady um, both of which have, we've reached out to on the Boneyard podcast and offered them an interview to come speak their mind, but uh, they both turned it down. Um, <laughs> they they really tore down everything. The yeah. only, I mean, finally they get Jeff Lebo out at, in the basketball program. The only good part of the athletic department that is still around from those days is Cliff Godwin, the, the head yeah. baseball coach. And we know all about Cliff Godwin. He and, was at UCF uh, for a few years as an assistant coach. Uh, and, I mean, he's an ECU alum, so yeah. it, it's kind of – he and Ruff and McNeil were both ECU alums, right? And um, so you understand why he's still there. But you, you go through this change and – then they both finally leave or, or are fired. Yeah, because Scotty uh, Scotty Montgomery was what he was three and nine for three consecutive seasons. What in sixteen, seventeen, and eighteen. So then he's yeah, fired and, after the third year. And he went and, two and zero to start the, to start his career. He beat Western Carolina, I believe it was Western Carolina. He beat, and then he beat NC State at home. And everybody was like, "Oh, damn! Like we're not bad." <laughs> And then you go on the road and you lose a close one to South Flo- or to South Carolina. You lose like 15 to 10 and you're like, oh, well, look, we had to go into South Carolina. This is a young team. We're still going to be pretty good. And then you go three and nine and your last your only win is like UConn. Yeah. And it's like, damn, like we suck. And that that was that was tough. Um so so that. in comes in comes Mike Houston right the, uh, yep. for 2019. I remember, you know, UCF had you know Scott Frost. He leaves after 2017, and and there wasn't like, you know, eventually went to Josh Heupel, but there wasn't like a slam dunk name that when Frost left, people thought, yeah, that's who, you know, AD Danny White's going to hire. So I remember doing research about names that could fit. And I remember doing a lot of reading about Mike Houston at that time. Was it James Madison and? You know, I thought he would be a candidate for some sort of job, whether it was UCF or somewhere else. I don't think he really was a candidate for UCF, but I just remember doing a lot of reading about him back then. And then I guess a year later, he does get a job in, in FBS. And, and he's from, I think he's from North Carolina originally. Yeah. He had a lot, of, a lot of success at JMU. So, you know, I know it's been a process. He had to kind of build everything back up after everything was torn down. Uh, it, was, it was four and eight his first season in 2019. 2020 was a weird year, as we all know. It went three and six. I don't know what you take away and, from that. And but on, honestly, the like looking at the COVID year, there. I mean, look at the Tulsa game. The Tulsa game, ECU was shafted by the American Conference officials. There was two blown calls. It's the one of the best bad beats that I've ever seen on Scott. I'll have to go back and look at that. Yeah, go, yeah. It, it was Hall- I believe it was Halloween weekend uh, against Tulsa on the road at Tulsa. ECU won uh, that game uh, we, three UCF times. knows about on the road at Tulsa. They know all about there, that there's place. some there's some weird <laughs> magic going on in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Um but yeah, ECU like there was like three plays that 
officials just missed on the last drive. Oh, they, there was a in Conference USA Championship game 2012. They blew the whistle on a punt, and they said they didn't blow the whistle, and Tulsa picked it up and ran it in for a touch, and that was the difference. That's why UCF didn't win the Conference Championship in 2012. And uh, so, yeah, I mean, that that's the that's one game. I mean, the Navy game, you play Navy pretty close with a true freshman as a backup quarterback. Holden Ayler, Hold Ayler's misses that game with uh with covid i mean that game that season you you very well could have been five and four instead of three and six if not better than five and four um and then like like you said last year it, it was like okay we're, we're doing pretty good and you start the season kind of like you do this year you lose a you lose to app state which app state's a good fbs program uh then you lose a close one on a miss or on a last second field goal to South Carolina week two and you're zero and two to start the season. And you're like already behind the eight ball. And then you go into Memphis last year or not Memphis, you go into Marshall on the road and you're down big and you come back and you find a way to win it. Yeah. 42, 38, 42, 38 was the final against Marshall last year on the road. Yes. So, and then you, then you go on a streak of winning like three straight games and then, you have another streak later on in the season where you win three straight games. Um, yeah, so you yeah. beat Memphis in overtime by a point. You beat on the road. You go to Navy. You win by a field goal. Yep. So that, there was, that was the, the last uh, second field goal. I yeah. mean, ECU, I believe, was in two games that were not – that were won or settled by more than one score, like, losses. Yeah. And, I mean, so, you, you, look, you look at UCF and Houston – you go on the road to UCF in Houston, you lose in the final minutes to UCF on the yeah, that road. Game, that game could have, yeah. And that was you, the first game I missed uh, ever for UCF. I uh, Somehow I got the flu. It, it wasn't wasn't the C thing that was going around, but I had a really bad flu that week. That was the first game I've missed in like 20 plus years and, at and home. You, but you lose, I watched it on ESPN Plus, but UCF easily could have, probably should have dropped that game. And, and you lose on the road at Houston in overtime. So I mean, there's ECU yeah. very well last year could have been nine and three. So so you you, you get a bowl berth. I'm not to say reach a bowl game because you didn't play it. Unfortunately, get a bowl berth for the first time what since 2014, I believe, and um, it was canceled. Military bowl. Oh, I think you're oh. supposed to play what Boston College where you were already. Oh, if, what if happened you, there? Like you were already practicing, you were getting ready if, to play, and it was a good episode to go listen to for, of the Boneyard Podcast. There is a Boneyard Podcast episode called "Adding Boston College to the Shit List," and that's <laughs> what we did. I'm sorry if if I can't curse on this thing. That's, I don't, so, I, that's I, fine. I don't care. <laughs> I am sorry. I, I believe it's like episode 81 uh, of the Boneyard Podcast. I guarantee it is a barn burner. Let me, I'm actually looking it up right now, making sure. I mean, with that that's not the only game that happened to Memphis went all the way to Hawaii. Like, I mean, ooh, that, that's a process. Thing, yeah. NC State happened. Same thing happened to NC State also. Um, uh, episode 83 it came out December 27th. I was literally about to drive up the next day to. It got canceled. I was going to drive up the morning of the game. Yeah, I was. Wasn't it like canceled the day before the game? Yeah, and both teams were there. And th- it came out that there were some guys with COVID from ECU, some of like some stars like Jaquan McMillan, who in my opinion last year was the number one quarter cornerback in the in the conference. But um, that that's going to go to Sauce Gardner if you talk to everybody else. Um, he he was out. He was going to miss the game. And I mean, he went undrafted this year. He, he left early to go undrafted, and um. You look at it and it's like, okay, it's going to be a tough game, but like, we we still want to play. And Boston College kind of was like, you know what, we got a couple. They they said something about half their offensive line was going to be out because of COVID, and I was like, all right, well, we're still we're playing with like a couple of our wide receivers out and a, like our star cornerback out, and it was like they were like, we're we're just not going to play. So they just kind of opted out. Kind and they opted out. Opt it, out it was, card. Yeah, it wasn't like it wasn't like there was too many people. They were just like, you yeah. know what? We're, we're not going to play. It's not safe for our players. It was like, no, you're you're <laughs> honestly you're a pussy because you. Oh, 
there's been – I mean, there's people on Boston College Twitter that still tag my, me and my co-host, Artie, in trying to sell their FECU shirts with Donald Trump on them. I'm like, dude, what are you doing? Um, that That is a dumb fan base, honestly. Boston College is – and this isn't UCF saying that. This is an East Carolina alum saying <laughs> Boston College fan base. Y'all suck. <laughs> UCF played uh, home and home with Boston College. They got 08 and 11 somewhere in there. So I w- I've been up there for a game. It was uh, they like their pro sports up there. My, They're not really into the college sports. So my, much. my favorite. I went on an NC State podcast earlier this week and or earlier this year, and they were like, uh, "Well, y'all don't play an ACC schedule." And I was like, "Okay, so you're telling me." I don't have to play Boston College every uh, yeah, year. So, so they're giving you the whole play. ACC schedule card? Unless you're playing Clemson, that's Clemson, not really any different yeah. than the AAC. And, and Yeah, you're, Clemson, playing, you're playing Boston College, Syracuse, like... But they're, they're good this year. But. They're good this year, but once every five years, they're good. <laughs> right. I mean, Pitt was good last year. They're okay this year. I think they're hyped up by their by their ranking. Um, I don't think they're, they should be a top 25 team. Uh, are they now? But I mean, they lose yeah, to Georgia they, they Tech. They dropped out after they lost to Georgia Tech. I, I mean, I Georgia Tech's another. There. I mean, Georgia Tech is a dumpster fire in one of the hotbeds of, of college football. Yeah, you, and, UCF beat Georgia Tech earlier this year. I know they got an interim coach now, so who knows? We'll see what happens there. But yeah, the ACC isn't the, the really eight, anything to brag about you when you talk about Duke Power and Wake on most years. Like, come on now. Yeah, come on. Yeah. And I literally said that, and then somebody was like, "Oh, well, Boston College made a bowl game last year," and I was like, "Yeah, they were supposed to play us." Look at Boston College now. They're what two and Two and five, yeah. One and one and six. So, really, the last time I went to Greenville, I didn't go in twenty twenty because I don't even think you guys were allowing fans. And then maybe last we, minute they it, said they could it, have parents come. It was very minimal. Yeah, that, that was the first game of the. I believe that was the first was, game of the season. It might have been one of the first ones. And then for media and stuff, like, well, everything's on Zoom, and it's like there's no point, you know, wasting yeah, any that, time or that, resources to go to road games. So if it's just going to be on Zoom in the press conferences. So I didn't go to that one. But I remember in 18, uh, that was a game McKenzie Milton didn't play, uh, UCF star quarterback. I think he was nursing a little injury. But I remember uh, the big deal in Greenville was the Holt Nailers had, you know, assumed starting duties. Maybe it had been a game or two before that. But, you know, we heard all about it. He's from Greenville. His father is the PA announcer. I mean, we heard that story. It was a great story, and it's – it's continued on. He's been the starting quarterback 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. So when you start that long, you know, I think he's going to be the American uh, career passing leader. I think, what is he already ECU's career passing leader? He, well, he, he owns like all the records. Yeah. I mean, when you play that, I mean, he's a good quarterback, but when you play yeah. that long, when you're a starting quarterback for five seasons, which is unprecedented, uh, you're going to have a lot of records. Yeah. Uh, what? What do you think his his legacy will be at ECU when you look at, at quarterbacks? I, I was just kind of thinking that today because I know he's been a good quarterback, you know, but it's it's kind of been, you know, the early part of his career was ECU was down, had losing seasons. How will he be viewed? Uh, you know, I you know some of the guys, you know, before my time or your time, I know you hear about Jeff Blake back in the day, David Gerard, Shane Carden. More a little bit more recent than those guys. Those are the three that come to mind when I think about East Carolina quarterbacks. So, what, where do you think Holt Naylor's will be viewed? Maybe I mean, he's still got a few games to go to kind of make some more special memories. But, but how will he be be viewed? You think? Uh, what will his legacy be? Yeah, it's it, it depends on which fan you ask. Um, th- there's fans that are so ready for him to be gone, like surprisingly, <laughs> like there, there's fans that are like tired of hearing about him if you call in to to any post game reaction show or whatever after a bad a bad game then uh you're gonna hear some like local politics um said that that is a term that gets thrown around a lot here in just because he's he's from greenville and he's because, and he because he's from and... greenville his dad's the pa announcer he went to the local high school uh he, he's very well connected with his family's very well connected with uh, some of the other um, media outlets, I, I won't name names, but <laughs> has he been old, ever been truly pushed? I mean, in terms of, of holding on to a starting job, no, has there ever been a no. serious push? No. And, okay. And I mean, you, you've got the highest rated recruit in ECU history waiting the wings in Mason Garcia. 
and I mean, he, he's oh a yeah, yeah. I remember he was he was been, he was looking at UCF for a little while, but I remember he, that guy. He's yeah. a he's a four star quarterback. Uh, he, uh, well, I don't know if it happens to y'all anymore, but at ECU, if you if you're recruited as a four star and then you commit to ECU, they automatically take a star away. Um, <laughs> That's yeah, we know all about that. UCF fans know all about that. And <laughs> and so he was a four star recruit. He commits to ECU, and they take a star away. So technically, he's a three star. <laughs> Mason Garcia, he's been waiting in the wings for now three years. His freshman year was the COVID year, and okay. he's still got he's still got four years of eligibility left. He's probably going to redshirt this year. He, he's only played in, I believe, he's only played in one game, so he, he's got he's still got the opportunity to to redshirt this year, and he's been learning behind behind whole nailers. But a lot of the fan base is like, look, like if this guy's supposed to be better than Holton, why aren't we playing it? Right, and I, I talked about it with one of my buddies this week. It, they they asked the same thing, and I said, if Whole Nailers has the experience, sometimes experience trumps skill. And if their skill level is about the same, then I'm going to take the experience right now. Um, now, do I think that if we get into one of these games and uh, we're down? 45 in the second half to UCF or Cincinnati. Should we get, should we get Mason Garcia in the game? Yes. But at the same time, it's like, okay, well, are you going to really bench a fifth year starter who means so much to the town and so much to the program? No, you're not. So EC's kind of handcuffed themselves in, in that sense. Um, and, it, but it's a good problem to have because you've got, You've got Mason Garcia. There's going to be another commitment coming this weekend uh, to ECU. Look, this isn't any – like, I'm not breaking news, but there's, <laughs> there's going to be a good three-star quarterback committing to ECU this weekend, uh, flipping from a Power 5 school in the Big 12, and it it's it's big. I mean, it, it's – you've got these quarterbacks, and you're building that line. You're building that depth at the quarterback position to where you can have a guy play his whole career. Then you've got another guy that – it's winning the wings. That's going to still have two to three years of eligibility left once once that guy leaves. It kind of just kind of made me think about it. How what what kind of landscape is there for NIL in Greenville? Because it, it's it's more of a you know it's obviously a college. I mean it's 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 more of a college town than obviously well, Orlando would be. <laughs> and and you think there would be more business? You know everything kind of revolves around ECU and Greenville. So from a local business standpoint, you think there would be some opportunities? I know it's kind of moved toward collectives and, you know, deep pocketed yeah, donors pooling their money. I know that's kind of where it's going, but there, you would think Greenville would be pretty good for NIL. Yeah, there is an NIL collective. Um, funny enough, it's called uh, Team Boneyard, uh, not affiliated with us. <laughs> There's a lot of Boneyards. I remember the Boneyard yeah. banter message board has been around that, forever. That's also not affiliated with <laughs> us either. Um, but, yeah, I mean, you've got that. that that's led by... Um, one of the leading businessmen in, in Greenville, North Carolina. Look, ECU is the, I believe, the only FBS program, if not Charlotte, uh, in the state of North Carolina that doesn't have an indoor practice facility. And so there's donors now trying to get in to donate. I mean, ECU is doing this whole Pirate Unite campaign to try to raise like $45 million to build on to, to their athletics campus. But now you've also got you've also got your your donors giving into the to the NIL and it hasn't really taken off. Um, Whole Nailers just announced yesterday he's now under an NIL deal with Bojangles. Um, okay, so that's big. That's big. That's a big deal, in yeah. North Carolina. Bojangles. I mean, it, it's huge. Yeah, <laughs> Bojangles and Cookout, man. Like uh, if you got one of those, you're, you're golden. Um, yeah, but like I mean, Whole Nailers has also has his own apparel company called Built When Broken. Um, you've got some other guys, Keen Mitchell, the running back, uh, he's sponsored by bagel man. And, uh, he gave one of the best quotes I I've heard from him, uh, a couple weeks ago after ECU beat, I believe it was old dominion. He was asked like, what do you, what do you say to like your offensive line? And he was like, Oh, well, as y'all know, I'm sponsored by bagel man now. So I told him all I'm taking them to bagel man to get them like some, some sandwiches. And so after we beat Memphis, he had 150 yards. I asked him, I said, are you taking the offensive line back to bagel, man? And he said, no, nah, they want milkshakes now. So um, you got, you're getting, you're getting some of that. Um, it, 
you, you've got these guys that are doing some different things. They just announced that uh, you're going to start being you're going to be able to start buying apparel um, with with the players' names on it and stuff like that, which is which is always great. Um, yeah, I've seen. Like, I don't know if that's you with fanatics. I've seen that. I think yeah, players it, make it, like two dollars. I don't think it's much yeah, of a lucrative but, windfall, but, but. It, it, they are trying to do something. Yeah, right. And yeah, um, yeah I always like going in. I, I know you guys have. I think it's uh, UBE or Pirate yeah. Wear. Like it's a really cool store. Like UCF doesn't have anything like that. You know, in terms of like a really cool. Yeah, Disney World. That, well, yeah, we got Disney World, but we don't have UBE. But. <laughs> I, I, I'm kidding. I yeah, we have. I mean, you have UBE. You've got a couple other places. Um, and then I mean, yeah, you you've got the online shops, um, Dowdy Student Stores, which is I mean, a fantastic on campus bookstore. Um, it has a and bunch Dow, of I guess apparel. the 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 namesake Dowdy of that and the stadium. Ron Dowdy. He lives in Orlando. He's an Orlando yep. guy, so he gets on a. I think he's. I don't guess he still does. He used. To, I know he'd get on a private jet. Every every game day from Orlando, fly up to Greenville and come right back. So I know I was knew there was a little bit of a Orlando tie there with him. Yeah, it it's one of those things that I mean, the the town loves ECU, and the the thing with Greenville is, in in the city of Greenville, your your top three employers are the school system, the the Pitt County school system, then you have. Vident Health, which is now ECU Health, it, it's I mean ECU is a big nursing school, big yeah. medical school, and then you have East Carolina University. Those are the top three employers in the state of, or in the county of Pitt County and the city of Greenville. Yeah. And so you're you're looking at it like okay, this t- this town loves ECU. You go to the BB and T or now Truist, and it's purple and gold. Yeah, you go to the Taco Bell, it's purple and gold. Everything's purple and gold in, in Greenville. It's, it's that I mean, that's that's the special thing. You know, I've been to all these cities in the American through the years for games, and you know, you go to you know Temple or in Philly. I mean, yeah, Philly is a great place to visit. They have no idea what's going on with Temple football. I mean, same you, with New Orleans and Tulsa. And, and it, what is it about ECU? You were telling me off air. Uh, you're from another part of North Carolina. It's not like you grew up in Greenville. You don't have family ties to ECU, but you go as a student. You said you weren't the biggest college football fan growing up, but you really got attached to the team while you were there. What what makes ECU so 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 special? I guess. Uh, see that that's the thing is like east I, I look i come from a small town uh actually i, I know you asked the question about barbecue yesterday. yeah well, i'm gonna yeah, i'll talk about that in a second I, but yeah I, yeah I i can't i come from in my opinion the the barbecue capital of the world in, in lexington north yeah carolina. that's my that's western town. north carolina barbecue right yeah right so i mean ecu fans have a chip on their shoulder so anytime that there's a perceived dig at East Carolina, that then ECU fans rally behind that. You look at any Twitter poll, it doesn't matter. ECU fans are going to be all over that Twitter poll. I mean, th- that's what how you become the three-time Barstool Best Bar champions of the world and, and when you have sup dogs. Um, yeah. I mean, that that's kind of the ECU mentality. And that's the mentality. I mean, I grew up, uh, I mean, I grew up in quite honestly, a a trailer park or or in a trailer and, and I never thought college was an option. Um, and so when I decided to go to college, my mom basically was like, Hey, like I was going to go to the military. My mom was like, just apply, just apply. And I looked at, I was like, okay, where's the cheapest place to apply honestly. (laughs) And it it was, it was East Carolina. I I applied at, at UNC Charlotte as well. Um, and I was like, all right, I got into both and I was like, all right, what, what do I want to do? And I wanted to, at the time I wanted to be a pilot and I was like, okay, I'm going to go be, do air force ROTC at ECU. I also want to get away from, from home. Charlotte's about an hour away. I knew people that would go to Charlotte, come back every weekend. I didn't want, if I was going to go to college, I was going to go and I was going to move away from home for a little bit. And I moved to Greenville and it was like, honestly, the first, it was the first city I ever lived in um, coming from rural North Carolina. And it was like, I, I don't know. It, it, I, I fell in love with the city and I fell in love with the atmosphere around campus, everybody walking around and 
And I mean, it, the, the, if you've been to ECU's campus, you'll know that it's not a very big campus. It's, it's kind of spread out over like six or seven blocks um, of, but it's all on the same patch of land. You don't have to walk to different parts right. of the city um, to, to go to it. So um, everything's just right there and every, the city is built up around the, the campus. So if you wanted to go somewhere, you just had to, it was just a quick walk or just a short ride to it and I, I was like man i love this and I, I started i started going to my i went to my first football game and i fell in love i fell in love i met some good friends it was it was a big thing um and what, then, what was that what was that first first season for you was it what 13 tw- yeah 2013 so the okay. uh the 10 and 3 season uh with a bowl win over uh ohio in the beef of brady's bowl and what's that shreveport or in new orleans um, I don't know what that is now. It's the one where they play in the Mercedes Benz Superdome yeah. or whatever. Yeah. Um, no, or no, that was the one we played. It was played in Tampa Bay. If it was Beef O'Brady's Bowl, it would have been at the Tampa Bay Rays. Yeah, Dome. That, that's where it was. Yeah. From, okay, I don't, I don't know why I was thinking uh, the Superdome. We we played in that one several times yeah. too. <laughs> that, I think an RL Carrier Bowl. Yeah, or something. we played in that one like three or four times. <laughs> um, but yeah, that. So I mean, that first season was it was just magical. I mean. It was kind of the first time ECU wore the black uniforms. We were good. I mean, I remember waking up in, on Sunday morning or Sunday afternoon and after a long night out at, at the bars in Greenville and looking at my phone and searching for the AP poll to see where's a, where's ECU at, right? And, I mean, ECU was ranked at the time. They were ranked the next year too. And, it, I mean, that was always like – I mean, that we loved it, right? Um, and – Everybody at ECU loved that. And that's kind of, I mean, during the down years, this past couple of years, it's, that's why we started this podcast, yeah. right? Um, Artie, my, my co-host, I mean, we're, we're fraternity brothers. We, we sit around, we talk sports and we drink beer and that that's kind of our MO. And we look at Greenville media and I've talked to several members that are in the Greenville media uh, about this. And we, we look at it and we're like, this is, the the Greenville media is really just old, old white guy media for the most part. <laughs> and I mean, that, that didn't sit well with us. They have the same old takes that they've had for the last 30 years. And we wanted to change it up and be a podcast for the younger generation. I mean, I graduated in 2017, so I'm, I'm only five years removed from graduating. Um, I'm, I'm still in my twenties and, and have a kind of a better pulse on what my generation feels and wants from the program. And that's what we talk about. Um, and the fan base has fallen off. Um, there, there's a, there's a. Yeah. That, that's, that's what I've kind of noticed too. I mean, it's sad. Cause I mean, I remember going, I think my first time ever going up there for a game, I think it was 07. And I think that might've been the Chris Johnson era. And I mean, that place. Right was the podcast. Yep. They talk about the 50,000 strong. I mean, you know, stadiums a sell out it was loud i mean the fans were nasty getting after it i mean it was a great atmosphere and it was pretty good you know i remember some of the subsequent years but yeah it's it's kind of taken a dive here and i know obviously the the losing you know was a yeah, major the, part of that the the biggest part was like i said earlier the administration that tore it all down um it that lost that put a bad taste in a lot of ecu fans mouths um and then of course the losing and it, it's that cycle of to be good, you got to win. To have good fan participation, you got to win. But to have good wins, you've got to have good fan participation, right? So it's like, what is it the chicken or the egg, right? And uh, uh, so many fans got so tired of of the losing, the constant losing, and always like being just one step behind, like. If you look back in 2014, there was a poll done from all the college football coaches what group of five schools should be in the Power Five. The leader was East Carolina University. And now it's like, okay, well, now we're just a mid-major yeah. team. I mean, and, that's, that's the sad thing with, you know, with UCF and Cincinnati and Houston getting the call up. It's it's sad, you know, when you look at ECU and Memphis are the two that really come to I guess Boise, if you look at – over in the mountain West that these, these schools deserve more than, than what they're being, I mean, they're being left with ECU Memphis. And I would say maybe SMU 
um, probably deserve it. I mean, there's some other schools. Uh, I mean, at times, South Florida has shown, and I, I know I might get chastised from <laughs> your fans for no, saying I mean, this. You're, you're right, but at, I mean, at, yeah, at they, times, they've had at decent, times, and maybe at back time. in 2007, but yeah, they were but number two there, in the country for one week. Been, but there have been times yeah. where where USF has looked like they're they're doing something. right, right. Um, even even in a couple of years ago, probably what was that 2013, 2014. I mean, I felt like USF was pretty decent in one of those years. I can't remember what what year exactly, but it was. I mean, you look at some of these teams, and you're like, man, like they should they should really be in. Look, and anybody that talks about media markets, miss me with that because I mean, ECU while they may not have the Raleigh media market, they have the. I mean, they own Charlotte. They had they had pieces. So the, of yeah, they, a like, lot of markets statewide. It's, because, I mean, and I mean. It, really nationally i mean you can go i mean i've been all over the place i was in key west a couple weeks ago and saw somebody with an ecu shirt on i mean you go somewhere and it's one of those things where it's like everywhere you go you see people that you know like houston texas yeah the jerry holland the former ad used to have some sort of stat he would put out i think in terms of you know it's not you shouldn't just look at greenville new Bern. it's it's you know dc it's virginia it's it's yeah, raleigh I mean, it's charlotte it, it's i mean a lot of a lot of the people that come to ecu i mean it's something crazy like you would think that behind north carolina the number two state for like attendance as far as or enrollment would be like virginia it's not it's pennsylvania Number three, New Jersey. And it's because those school, those kids can pay less money to go to college in the South than they can pay up there. And it's hmm. not that far from home. Hmm. So, I mean, half my fraternity was from South, South Philly, North New Jersey. Right. So it's, it's one of those things where you, you probably have more ECU fans in Philly than you have Temple fans just to be honest with you. Yeah. And it, it's one of those things that it's like the fan base is so spread out. I mean, Raleigh, Charlotte, um, Houston, Dallas, DC. I mean, if they're not from Philly, if they're not from South or from uh, South Jersey, then they're going to be from like, they're going to be from DC. They're going to be from Delaware. They're going to be from Maryland. They're New York. I mean, that, the the fan base is so spread out and they're all over they are all over and that that's the one thing it's like it's not just the raleigh market right like everybody's like oh well what what's y'all's market it's not just greenville i mean <laughs> look at tuscaloosa i mean tuscaloosa yeah. alabama <laughs> well, it's the like, whole state of alabama yeah. right so and everywhere um, else yeah, you, you brought it up a minute ago. I, I guess that was me in the Gus Malzahn press conference on Monday. I knew it was getting towards the end. Gus doesn't show a whole lot of personality. Uh, he's kind of just sticks strictly business. So I thought that was a good opportunity to see if I could, you know, maybe get him to crack a smile, say something interesting, non-football related. So I asked him, you know, I couldn't remember. He was at Tulsa, offensive coordinator for a couple of years. I wasn't sure if they played at ECU any of those years. I, I guess not. Um, but then, you know, I thought, hey, I'll just ask a bar. I mean, I didn't plan it. I mean, it literally just popped in my head because when I think about ECU, I think about Eastern North Carolina barbecue and the vinegar and you go to Parker's and there's different places around there. So I just thought I'd ask, I go, you, you know about their barbecue or are you big barbecue guy? And it was just, it literally just came, came to me when I opened my mouth. I didn't even pre-plan it. And he kind of, you know, <laughs> kind of, you know, I don't think anybody react. He's not very... When you ask him oddball questions, he doesn't seem to uh, you think he kind of froze a little bit. But he's like, no, I'm not a big barbecue guy. I didn't know that. You know, whatever he said. And it's all about I brisket. Guess, yeah, I, I like a little bit of brisket, I guess. And and I guess the EC, I don't know if it's Pirate Radio, whoever it was, because they picked up on that. And they made sure to ask Mike Houston on Tuesday uh, if they're going to get him a plate of Eastern North Carolina barbecue. And they seem kind of offended that he didn't know about Eastern North Carolina barbecue. So. I mean – there's a couple things that we have here in North Carolina. It's Bojangles Cookout, Cheerwine, and North Carolina Barbecue. And I mean, like, like I, I've got, I'm getting flack from ECU fans even now on my personal Twitter because I put out a tweet saying, "Look, 
Lexington style is still better than Eastern style. There's this <laughs> it's whole an acquired argument. taste. I, yeah, I, it, I can I can respect it. I'm not it, a huge fan of it, but I can respect it. Maybe if you grow up with it, you feel differently. I, I I grew up I grew up with Lexington style and eating it. And my first day of classes, um, I, I when I went to ECU, I didn't really know about the barbecue culture. I, I knew where I came from. I mean, we have a barbecue festival where we shut down the the whole city. <laughs> um for for a barbecue festival and it it's I, my first day of classes I went I walked into my economics class and I sat down in the front row and the the professor kind of looked at me there's probably 150 people in this class he looked at me and he said you look like you're like the only freshman in this class which I was um and he said where are you from and I told him I was from Lexington North Carolina the rest of the class all we did was debate barbecue um and so that that was that was fun that that's kind of what it is here Right. I mean, everybody has it's either East versus West. Look, if you're calling it West, I already know you've lost the the uh, conversation because it's Lexington style. OK, uh, it's not really you, Western style. It's Lexington you, style. All you'll right. hear people say Western, but like it's really it's Lexington. It comes from Lexington. Um, and then you've got you got people saying, oh, well, Eastern style. Look, the difference is Eastern style. They just use like the vinegar and, and they do. A, it's a whole hog barbecue right so they'll yeah, use all the whole hog in every, lexington every part. in lexington is, is more the shoulder um and then you've got you've got different ingredients um in the barbecue sauce we don't call it a sauce in, in lexington it's called barbecue dip um so if you if you come into lexington don't ask for sauce they're gonna look at you funny um but you can ask for sauce and in and, and the eastern part but it's gonna be more of like what people are used to like that kind of syrupy sauce yeah. that, because it's cooked with the vinegar on it and it, and it, it's not really like it's not like some of the add flavor it's to bring out the flavor of the meat right um and then in in the lexington style it, it's still the same thing it's still vinegar but you've got uh you you've, a lot of times you'll have some ketchup added to it you'll have some like tomato or some some pepper added to it to add just a little more flavor um, anybody that tells me that Lexington style is dry, you can kiss my ass because it's not. Speedy's Barbecue is is by far the best place to eat barbecue in the state of North Carolina. Yeah, unfortunately, the game's not being played in in Lexington. It's going to be in Greenville. Uh, so yeah, I'll, I'll it doesn't bring, matter. Are you, are barbecue you gonna be, or not? Are you going to be in the press box? Are you going to be in the press uh, box? I'll probably be on the field. I, I think I'll have a photo pass. But I mean, I'll be okay. in the press box before the game and stuff. So, uh, yeah. Well, it, it would be a big miss. Last week we had barbecue in the press box. It would be a big miss. If we don't have barbecue in the press box again this week, is it Parker's? Do they cater? Do they cater the games? Uh, I thought they did a few years ago. They have. I, I don't know if now it. I'm sure it probably is. It, they don't ever really say who caters. Okay. Um, but I, I would assume that's who it is. I mean, ECU dining and ECU athletics does a hell of a job uh, for for the media up there. I mean, I. I'm looking forward to seeing the the new tower in 2018. Awesome. The tower was under construction, it's and although awesome. we used it, we got up in a construction elevator to access. The, it was it now, wasn't quite. I'm surprised they let us in, but it wasn't when, finished. So I haven't you, seen the the finished product yet. When you are like, I'll, I'm usually on the field about fifth until about 15 minutes before kick, and um, <laughs> if you're trying to get up with all the people that have been tailgating. Cause you ride the same elevator. Yeah. And that's how it goes. Most places. And, yeah. And you pass the club levels and all that. And oh my gosh, it is. I, I saw some people get kicked out of the tower last week from trying to sneak in. Um, it, it, it is a, it is a sight, especially yeah. after an ECU victory. Um, yeah. A lot of drinks have been drunk. Um, a lot of people needing to call Ubers to get home. Um, so yeah, it, it's it's very interesting coming down from the tower. Yeah, so uh, so real quick, I, I'm coming into town on Thursday night. A lot of you, I don't know how many some some UCF fans are making the trip. What are some of the food places? I we we talked about Parker's. I think Mike Houston mentioned uh, Sam Ellis Barbecue. Uh, they there are a couple places. It didn't have to be bar barbecue, but if someone was looking yeah. for the Greenville experience, the 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 culinary experience, whether it's barbecue or a bar or whatever else, what what would be a couple of recommendations? Yeah, if you're if you're trying to stay close to the campus, um, I mean, Sub Dogs is I mean it's a decent walk from the stadium. Um, there is a there's a bus that goes to and from the stadium. 
And that is a hot dog specialty place, right? Well, Sup Dogs, is that what it is? Yeah, so they, they got hot dogs. They, it's hot dogs, hamburgers. They got chicken wings. Uh, they got, like, different wraps and stuff. It's it's bar food. Um, they got drink specials all the time. Um, I mean, they, they've – it's it's a great place. It's got, like, a double deck out, outdoor seating with big TVs. You can watch all the games. Um, if you're going to go – Go fairly early because, I mean, the wait is, can be long at times. Um, tell Brett, the owner, I sent you, the Boneyard Podcast sent okay. you. They're good friends of the podcast. So if I'm um, going to go in there, what, what shall I order? Like, what, what is, is oh, it a hot dog? Um, is it a burger? Is it, it, it all the above or any, any of it? So I usually, get a, I'll usually get a burger or I'll usually get a hot dog um, most of the time. Sometimes I'll get a burger. Um, but most of the time I'll get a... Uh, Cheesy bacon delight. Basically, it's a hot dog with melted cheese and bacon on it with ranch and sup sauce poured over it. Sup sauce is like your normal, um, it, it's like their secret sauce, right? Um, kind of reminds me of like a Big Mac sauce. Um, so with that all, all over it, then I'll get bacon cheese tots and a um, and an orange sup crush. It which sounds is, very healthy. I like it. <laughs> it oh, no. It's the <laughs> very opposite um go there uh if you're looking for a place afterwards if you're um well i guess it's gonna be late after the game yeah um, an- another place like if, if you're trying to go maybe, like maybe a, maybe friday night friday night um there, there's a restaurant called uh nino's it's a it's a good italian place ottavola another good place um basil's is a good italian place winslow's is, is a cool little bar um downtown greenville um you you got some the, i saw that there's this new like nashville style uh restaurant downtown it's called i think it's just called nash is it hot um, chicken is that what yeah it is? yeah yeah um you got that you got um is it the black and kraken which is like a was is another like kind of sports bar type place um and then i mean carolina l house is, is a sports bar that it's more of a franchise type place um yeah i've seen that that's kind of going towards the stadium like towards the mall on that side of the road yeah i've seen that for years it's in the parking lot of the mall um if you if you're looking for a place to go eat like a lunch i think they're open i think they're open on sundays it's cash only um one of the most like one of the most underrated places in greenville in my opinion is a place called cubby's um, go to Cubby's. Uh, I've been there. I think it's downtown. It's like on a corner, right? Uh, it's, it's kind of it's on the no, edge of downtown. They, they don't have. It's not downtown. It, well, it's, I don't unless think they, they had a location. I know I went anymore. like probably 10, got, 10 years ago. This one's over the one that I used to go to. There, there's one over by the the mall. Okay, now, maybe they move. I remember Cubby's. I remember the, going now to they Cubby's used to have, downtown. They used to have two locations. Um, but yeah, Cubby's. It's it's over near the mall, kind of. Uh, if you put in, if you can't find it on your GPS, if you put in Buffalo Wild Wings, it's like right next to the Buffalo okay. Wild Wings. Um, you got there. Um, I'm trying to think of other other places like downtown. There's really there's a couple things. I mean, you've got Parker's um, Friday if you're in town early enough. Uh, you can try to go to B's Barbecue. There, look, you can't call. There's, it's like a, I know, I've heard about it. It's basically just a roadside place. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, you take whenever, out when they run they out, s- they run out. Yeah, whenever they sell out, they're done. Uh, they close up shop. You can try that. Um, yeah, I mean, there, there's so many places. Oh, and in my opinion, um, if you if you were looking for a pizza, go to Marabella's on. Is that Arlington? Uh, it's on Greenville Boulevard. Go to the Marabella's on Greenville Boulevard and get a, a grandma style pizza. It, it's pretty good. Okay. All right. And well, then well, well, if you're if you're leaving the bars, if you if you're listening to this and you're leaving the bars, there's a place. Um, why can I not think of the pl- the name of it? Uh, it it's a, like a gyro place. Um, okay. I'm I'm usually too drunk to remember the name. <laughs> um <laughs> maybe that's it, it's it's right downtown uh, i'm gonna probably remember it right after we we get off this omar's it's called omar's go to okay. omar's um i i'll eat it occasionally but everybody loves it you'll have to wait in line but it, it they're only open like thursday to thursday friday and saturday night from like 11 a 11 p.m to like 2 a.m 
the only time they're open and they do all their business during that time. So that tells you uh, what kind of clientele that they're dealing with. <laughs> Yeah, a couple of so we'll start to wrap up here. Just like uh, first off, you know, obviously this is going to be the last game that UCF and ECU play, at least for the foreseeable future, unless there's a non-conference series or a bowl game or something in the years to come, which is kind of sad. Like I said, I've been to Greenville a bunch. You know, it's always been you know the best atmosphere. You know, as far as you know, other teams in the Americans, I've always enjoyed the the trips to Greenville. I'm I'm sad to see it go. Um, for ECU fans, how do they feel about, you know, not playing UCF anymore? I guess, you know, is Cincinnati and Houston to be the same way? Are they, do they kind of lament the end of this series? Are they, I don't know if excited is the right word, but you know, now Charlotte's coming into the league. I mean, I don't know if anyone, ECU fans really care about playing Charlotte, but how do they kind of feel about everything that's going to happen with realignment and kind of losing some of the rivalries like UCF? Um, yeah, I mean, in conference, UCF has definitely been our rival. I mean, looking at it, just a, there's such a long history, like we talked about earlier with ECU and UCF. Um, it felt like UCF was just a natural rival, um, kind of in all sports, really. Um, you, you don't, outside of like our NC States and Carolinas, right. um, there's not really a rivalry with Charlotte. Um, there's not a rivalry with Florida Atlantic or, or yeah. Rice. Um, or Tulsa, maybe a or, little bit, not really. I mean, yeah, Tulsa, no. Do you know any Tulsa, Tulsa fans? No. <laughs> I, I, I know the Golden Hurricanes. Those are two, those are two okay. great guys, but yeah. um, that those are the only Tulsa fans I've ever seen or heard of. Um, yeah, it, it kind of sucks. Um, like I said, Mem- I, I could see Memphis becoming a, a rival yeah, without the two- last two games. Yeah, two good games here last couple years. And yeah, and it, it seems like they're two kind of programs that are kind of at the same level. Similar boat right now that, yeah, that probably yeah. should should be moving up, but for whatever the and, circumstances are, just aren't. Yeah, and I, I see ECU hopefully. I mean, this isn't the end of conference realignment. Th- this is not the end. Uh, look, ECU is not going to be able to join the ACC. We've tried that. We've been voted against by – two teams or two schools in the state of North Carolina. Uh, it's a school in Raleigh that wears red and white and a school that wears Carolina blue. Um, they, they don't like us and that, that's why we hate them. But um, so we're not going to join the ACC unless those two schools leave. Um, well, hey, I mean, you talk about big 10, you know, in North we, Carolina could be a target, you know, talking about when the grand rights ends for the ACC. Uh, so you never know. I mean, maybe, maybe this may, won't maybe be in the then. ACC anymore, but maybe there'll be an opportunity. You may, never know. May, maybe then, but um, I mean, I, I still see that th- even with the Sun Belt making a move, I still think that the, the programs in the American are more willing to spend um, on, on their programs. I mean, you look at SMU, you look at Memphis, you look at South Florida building their new stadium. Um, I mean, you've got these programs that are willing to spend. ECU starting to do that. Um, Navy is always going to be able to yeah. spend. Yeah, Navy's a I, great program. I mean, it, it, but is there is there a segment of, of ECU fans that look at the Sun Belt and you look at App State and you look at some of these teams that have had some big wins, a, even though it, you would have said it was, a, you would have thought it was a step down a, a couple years ago. But now they, I, I think it's not as much so. They, it would be more ground. geographically friendly for ECU too. They, they've gained ground, that's for sure. Um, that is for sure. But I mean, you look at it; they, they were boasting, "Oh, like we 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 beat all these teams. They beat Texas A and M. They beat Notre Dame." Well, then they all lost, and and now they're not yeah, going to be in the mix. And then for they, the went, group of five. they went. And then they went zero yeah. and five against the new. They were talking about how like they were so much better than the new American Athletic Conference. The very next week, they go zero and five against the American Athletic Conference. Yeah, <laughs> I'm like, all right. Yeah, I, I think App State is. I think App State's overrated. Um, I I just do. Um, but they had a great game yeah. day though the other week. But Yo, yeah, geez. for just to. to in this, uh, looking at Saturday, uh, we talked a little bit about Holt Nailers. Yeah, I don't know if we really talked about Keaton Mitchell, uh, the running back. He's the AAC's leading rusher, averaging 97 yards a game. Uh, they've got uh, wide receiver Isaiah Winstead. I think he's third in the league, averaging over 100 yards a game. The defense is, you know, pretty solid. I think they're about, you know, four or five maybe when you look at the AAC. So if ECU, if they're going to be successful on Saturday, if, if they're going to have an opportunity to beat UCF, 
Uh, how does that happen? What do they need to do well, in your opinion? Uh, first, start off with um, you, you got to put pressure on on Plumlee. Uh, you, you got you got to try to get to him. Um, that you got to try to make him throw the ball. I mean, that was kind of the the yeah. game plan. You know, passing wise, he had a great game against Temple. That was something that we hadn't really seen yet in in, in full display. So I guess you could say that, but you know, yeah. Yeah, that, that that's what you got to do. You got you got to make him throw the ball. You got to make him move. Um, EC's rush defense is better than their secondary, but you've still got to you got to make him uncomfortable. That's what they did with Seth Hennigan. You make the quarterback uncomfortable, he's he's going to make a mistake. Um, that that's what you got to do against him. And you can't turn. You got to win the turnover battle, right? EC you cannot turn the ball over more than one time this week and expect to win. Um, You've got to have kind of all your guys going on offense and and have a de- good defensive uh, play to, to win this ball game. And it, it's going to be a tough battle. Look, I, I think that uh, – do I see that this game is a easily winnable game? No. I, do I think it's winnable? I do. Um, but do, am I predicting that it's going to be like ECU – just comes out and dominates i don't i don't think it's gonna be that i think ucf is gonna be the toughest this might be the toughest game outside of cincinnati that ecu plays all year and we, i mean we're talking about uh, ecu playing cincinnati byu uh U, ucf and houston um i mean we're, we're talking about playing some pretty good teams um throughout throughout the course of the year and i, I think this game and the cincinnati game are gonna be the two toughest for ecu all season all right. Well, Jared, I, I certainly enjoyed our conversation here over the last hour. I'm looking forward to uh, heading up to Eastern North Carolina myself. Uh, I'll be heading up on uh, on Thursday, flying into Raleigh and kind of making that hour and a half drive that I've done many times uh, heading over eastward uh, to Greenville. So I enjoyed Just the straight conversation. Straight down 264. <laughs> I'll look for you on Saturday at the stadium and uh, enjoyed it. And uh, best of luck to East Carolina. Same to UCF. Thank you.